please uh, feel free to mingle for a few more minutes and we'll get going in uh, about two or three. Testing, testing. Sounds good on the going out. Laughing. Okay. Okay, it's going out. Testing one, two, test one, two, three, test one, two, three, test one, two, three, test one, two, three, testing one, two, three, test one, two, three, test audio test one, two, three, audio recording test one, two, three, one, two, three, test one, two, three. Audio recording test one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Test one, two, three. I will stand right here for the moment. It is 6.30, so I'm gonna grab my agenda real quick and we're gonna call the meeting to order. The first order of business we will do here in just a second is salute the flag. So let me grab my, grab my agenda and we will uh, do a flag salute here in just a second. Okay, everybody please rise. Ready, salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So thank you all for coming tonight. This is our, our first public outreach meeting of the Tulare County Advisory Redistricting Commission. This is an opportunity for us to hear from you, the, uh, the members of the public. We have uh, 11 commissioners that have been appointed by the Board of Supervisors. They're volunteering their time as you are tonight, so we thank all of you for being here. Before we get into the, uh, the discussion, I wanted to see if there were any city council members in the audience. I know we, we have at least one, so thank you for being here. It's uh, representing City of Farmersville. Um, and beyond that, Dr. Lucia Vasquez, she will be our facilitator for this evening. So I'm gonna go ahead and hand it off to her and she will walk us through our agenda. We have a few just very simple action items at the beginning, which will be done very quickly. 
and then we'll move on to our public open discussion after that. So again, thank you for being here and uh, we look forward to a good conversation. I think I'm gonna go from here so I don't have to give my back to the commissioners too badly here. Good evening. I'm probably going to do this so that you can um, hear me a little bit better. So uh, the first thing I want to remind the commissioners that when you speak, you actually have to turn your mic on and then turn it off when you're done speaking um, so that it's like a mute. We don't have to hear your conversations. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and uh, uh, do the roll call first. So if you could re respond to the roll call with your district number. Now, you all may not know who your district people are, so we conveniently put them district one through district five for you to give you an idea. So when we do the roll call, we will be doing the roll call alphabetical, but we would ask them to go ahead and name their district and that they're present, okay? Rodney Blaco. District one present. Ralph Diaz. District one present. Albert George. District four present. Elizabeth Gomez. District three, um, but serving the commission at large as an at large member present. John Hobbs. District two, present. Scott James. District five, present. Marie Macedo. Absent. Darlene Mata. District three, present. Edward McCurvy. District five, present. <coughs> Luis Sepulveda. District two, present. Excellent, thank you very much. So just to give you a little overview of what, what's gonna happen today, we do have some business to take care of very quickly. Uh, we are going to uh, elect our chair, possibly our vice chair today. Uh, and then we're gonna have a little bit of education so that we can wrap our heads around a little bit of what redistricting is, the tools that are available to you and that kind of stuff. And then we will open it up for public comment. After that, we'll take a quick little bathroom break and then the commissioners will come back to, to be able to have some discussion. You're welcome to stay for the whole thing. This is a public meeting, but I wanted to give you the outline uh, for today. If you would like to make a comment, in the back there, there are these comment cards. You can fill them out and take them over to that table. Uh, there you go. Take them over to that table and that will put you in line and that way y'all don't have to stand in line. Now, maybe you don't wanna make a comment, but you want to get notified by the commission uh, then at the very bottom there is an email, place for your email, so you can turn that in and that way you will be notified when our next meetings are. Which again, there's a whole list of them in the back there for you. See, we're getting through so much of this already. Okay, what's on my notes? Okay, we are now going to uh, do that little bit of business. So commissioners, at the end of the last meeting you had, y'all made a anonymous um, motion and pass that today you would choose your chair and that in two weeks you would uh, choose your vice chair. So because you voted unanimously, any one of you, and this is what I would suggest, any one of you can move to rescind that decision and that way today we can go ahead and push through and uh, go ahead and elect a chair and a vice chair. Uh, Supervisor, I mean, uh, right. Commissioner Hobbs. <coughs> Okay, and do I have a second? I'll a second. Okay, okay. Uh, somebody rose their hand, but s somebody spoke here, so I'm gonna go with, with uh, uh, Commissioner Mata. And, and use your things, right? Okay. okay, so all in favor? Do we need to do a roll call? I, uh, all in favor, we can see you now, we're not on Zoom anymore. Right? So all in yep. favor that we rescind the, uh, what we made last time? Okay, so thank you. We, we will need to do a, re a roll call. Roll call, okay, yes. we're ready for the roll call. Commissioner Rodney Blaco? Yes. Commissioner Ralph Diaz? Yes. Commissioner Albert George? Yes. Commissioner Elizabeth Gomez? Yes. Commissioner John Hobbs? Yes. Commissioner Scott James? Yes. Commissioner Marie Macedo? She's. Commissioner Darlene Mata? Yes. Commissioner Edward McCurvy? Yes. Commissioner Luis Sepulveda? Commissioner Jose Verdusco? Yes. 10-1 vote. 
Thank you. Okay, so today we will go ahead and uh, elect the chair. The other thing that I would strongly suggest is that we do not allow abstentions. You are only choosing the person that's going to help facilitate your meeting. Uh, so, if, and by bylaws, we do not have to use Robert's rules of order. You guys did ask about doing that, but if I may suggest that we go ahead and do a roll call vote, uh, the two people that have uh, been nominated are uh, Commissioner Hobbs and Commissioner Sepulveda. So, if you could, if we, if to make things go faster, we can do a roll call vote, and you can either vote for Commissioner Hobbs or Commissioner Sepulveda, and the majority votes, and we will have a chair. Does that seem agreeable? Any discussion? We, I didn't think we had any nominees right now. Yes, we had those two nominees from last time. They've been officially nominated through the rules, but I'm just saying we're not bound. Yes? Please use the mic. What I'd like to do is have um, us do this the same way we did it last time, which is take one motion at a time for nominations for chair and have that motion go through until we elect a chair and take each motion one motion at a time. I make a motion for John Hobbs. To, to be chair? To be chair. Please use your mic so we can hear you. You, my mic is on. Yes, I know, but somebody else was coming here. Okay, so we have a we have a motion, and I'll second. And we we have a second. I make. Are there any who, other? Uh, I'm sorry. Who's second? Please state your name when. Yeah, Mark. state your name so they can hear you. So, uh, Mr. Scott, is it? Okay, Mr. Yes. Scott was one, and uh, Darlene Matt, Commissioner Correct. Mata was two. Commissioner Rodney Blaco. Oh, oh, do we do the, do we do discussion and, and ask for any other nominations? We have to do one and then the other. Okay. One nomination. Okay. Is there, is there any discussion before we move on with the vote? Well, just clarification. What happens if you know with the first motion that goes through, but that doesn't give the opportunity for the second person interested? Well, uh, because the motion was made first, then you handle that motion. So you have to have at least six votes in order for the person that's firstly been nominated uh, to get it. So if he doesn't get the six votes, then we can take other nominations. But right now the motion is, uh, do we want to ha elect a Commissioner Hobbs uh, for the chair? But right now, the motion on the floor is for Mr. Hobbs. Uh, uh, just discussion. So is, are there other candidates for the chair? We won't know that until we find out if, if Mr. Hobbs has six votes or not. If Mr. Hobbs gets six votes on this time, then he will be your new chair. If he does not, then we can take further nominations. Was there another question? No, actually, I, if I can speak to the motion. You, I it's, it's discussion. Yeah, this is an awkward position to be in. Uh, I've never ran it for an office. I've never run for an office in which, you know, it's a singular vote. It usually the, the candidates who d decide to run, run at one group. Nevertheless, and it is what it is, uh, I too am a candidate uh, for the chairperson. Uh, I oppose the motion. I, uh, I, as I mentioned before, I don't want to go into my, my uh, uh, my background, but particularly, uh, I just want to express that if elected as chairperson for this commission, I will uh, dedicate my my energy to attending uh, many of the outreach program, any many of the outreach workshops, so that uh, I can understand what the community uh, uh, is saying about the redirect, uh, the redirecting of redistricting, excuse me, uh, and also. Uh, it encourage people, people in the community, to attend these events. It's so critical. Uh, every 10 years, this occurs, and I think it's so important that people throughout Tulare County attend these these meetings so that they can contribute. And with that in mind, I'll be quiet, and I ask for your support and vote. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any other discussion? Okay, to be clear, we're gonna take a roll call vote, and the motion on the floor, uh, uh, a yes would be to elect uh, Commissioner Hobbs as the chair, 
a note would be to not elect him. And there, if, we, if there are not six votes, uh, then we could move on to another elector or we will have our chair. Is that clear? Any questions? We're good. A roll call. Commissioner Ronnie Blaco? Yes. Commissioner Ralph Diaz? Yes. Commissioner Albert George? Yes. Commissioner Elizabeth Gomez? No. Commissioner John Hobbs? Yes. Commissioner Scott James? Yes. Commissioner Macedo is absent. Commissioner Darlene Mata? Yes. Commissioner Edward McCurvey? Yes. Commissioner Luis Sepulveda? No. Commissioner Jose Verdusco? The motion passes, seven yes, three no, one absent. Okay, so Commissioner uh, Hobbs will now be your chair and can take the meeting from here to elect the vice chair. Scott James makes a motion for Darlene Mata. Mr. Hobbs, I'm sorry, is your mic on? Are we hearing that? I think it is now. Thank you. If you can just continue to leave it on for the remaining meeting since you are now the chair, that would be easier for you. Okay. All right. Have to be mindful of the fact that I have a hot mic, huh? Um, are, are there any other? Oh, wait a minute. We take them one at a time. Is that correct? There, there is a motion. Do I have a second? Rodney Blaco, I second. Thank you. There is a motion and a second that uh, Darlene Mata uh, be elected vice chair. Um, is there any discussion on the motion? Well, um, may I contribute discussion yeah. on the motion? Um, it's, it's my understanding that Darlene uh, chaired the uh, redistricting um, commission for the city of Visalia and uh, did an admirable job and uh, I, uh, I think by virtue of that fact, she would, uh, we would be well served and well advised to elect her. Any, any other discussion? Scott James, I concur with you. Uh, Darlene would be a uh, perfect chair with her experience. Um, and uh, I look forward to her being the vice chair. Any further discussion? There being none, uh, I, clerk, would you? Uh, yeah, I just wanted to, I guess, make a comment on, again, just how awkward the proceeding is in yes. terms of it being, you know, wh the person that has the advantage is just the person that speaks up first. And so just stating that I feel uncomfortable with yeah, the process. That, that's the process of the Roberts Rule of Order. And yeah. That, Call the question then. Uh, clerk, would you call the roll, please? Commissioner Rodney Blaco? Yes. Commissioner Ralph Diaz? Yes. Commissioner Albert George? Yes. Commissioner Elizabeth Gomez? Abstain. Commissioner John Hobbs? Yes. Commissioner Scott James? Yes. Commissioner Macedo is absent. Darle Commissioner Darlene Mata? Yes. Commissioner Edward McCurvey? Yes. Commissioner Luis Sepulveda? No. Commissioner Jose Verdusco? Abstain. Uh, motion passes, seven yes to abstain one no and one absent. 
Well, congratulations, Darlene. Um, uh, the next item is uh, approval of the minutes from the previous meeting. Motion to approve minutes from May 20th, 2021 and June 3rd, 2021 in a single motion. Scott James seconds. Okay. Um, there are motion to approve the minutes. Uh, do I have a second? Second, Ralph Diaz. Second from Ralph Scott Diaz. James second uh, it. We don't, we don't have a roll call on the minutes, do we? Yes. Uh, do we? Yes, we, we do. Uh, but all right, everything will be roll call then. May, may I please, please ask who motioned? Excuse me? Who was, who motioned? Rodney Blanco, District 1. Thank you. And the second was by S Commissioner Scott James. James. Correct. Correct. Commissioner Rodney Blanco. Yes. Commissioner Ralph Diaz. Yes. Commissioner Albert George. Yes. Commissioner Elizabeth Gomez. Yes. Commissioner John Hobbs. Yes. Commissioner Scott James. Yes. And Commissioner Macedo is absent. Commissioner Darlene Mata. Yes. Commissioner Edward McCurvey. Yes. Commissioner Louis Sepulveda. Yes. Commissioner Jose Verdusco. Yes. Motion passes 10 1 absent. Okay. Um, Item four on the agenda is informational presentations. And I'm going to call on you, John. Absolutely. So I'm just going to spend just yep. one or two minutes here giving an overview of what redistricting is. I, I'm going to uh, hope that everybody here has an understanding. You've made it to the meeting. You should, you know, I believe you probably have a general understanding of what it is. Every 10 years, all levels of government, federal, state, local governments, redistrict their, their, their boundaries, their elected representation boundaries. So. You're probably very familiar with it at a congressional level. It certainly happens at a state level, and it happens at a county level. So tonight, the, this commission, their, their charge is only county board of supervisors, meaning that they don't have any responsibility over city councils, over school boards, over a state assembly, state senate, or any other kind. So if you have, curi if you have questions or comments about those districts, those are taken up elsewhere. Tonight is only about county board of supervisors. Specifically, we're in District 1, what's called District 1. The elected board member for this district is Larry McCary, um, and it obviously includes the, the city of Exeter and communities of Three Rivers, city of, uh, of, of Farmersville. So it's this sort of area of the county that we're representing tonight. The board of supervisors chose to create a commission for this purpose tonight to create an opportunity for public comment. The board, in the end, later this year, will be the, the final entity that adopts new boundaries to represent, to, to redraw any supervisorial changes. The way it works is, is that every 10 years, there's a census, maybe you participated in that you know, last year, the year before. Based on the population information and demographic information that's included in that census, the governments, particularly the county in this case, we have to draw our boundaries to make them consistent with voting laws. Primarily, and we'll go through these in a moment under redistricting criteria, but the, let's say, for example, one of the criteria is that all five board districts have to be equal in population. Presently, Tulare County has about 450,000 people countywide. So each district has to be plus or minus, I think there's a percentage range of uh, uh, some percentage that they have to be within that equal population distribution. We're assuming it's not, there's no facts to this, we don't know yet because we don't have the final data, but we're assuming that the county is gonna have 500,000 people plus or minus with the new information that comes out later this year. If that's the case, then of course, easy math, there would be about 100,000 people in each district countywide. So we would have to redraw the boundaries to make sure that they're all equal in population. So if we take it to the next level, what happened in the last 10 years are there's been growth in the county. Has that growth been equal across the county? The answer is probably no. Meaning that the city, of, I'm gonna make this up because we don't know the, date, the data, but let's say the city of Visalia grew very quickly, but the city of Lindsay grew very slowly. Meaning the city of Lindsay only added 1,000 people, but the city of Visalia added 10,000 people in the last 10 years, which could be possible given their relative size. That means that the city of Visalia's supervisorial district boundaries are gonna get smaller. 
because now it has to share that population with other district uh, supervisors. Whereas Lindsay, it might get a greater share of that district area. So all of those changes are taken into account when we receive the data. In addition, and I, I don't want to step on my, you know, a future part of this presentation, but there are eight criteria that also direct their statutory criteria. We don't have a choice but to follow them. We have to comply with them. They direct how the boundaries are drawn. So really, this process is built kind of two, there's two folds to this process. One, there's a legal statutory framework that exists by which we have to comply. It's, it would be against the law not to. Second, we also are required and it's advisable to seek public comment and input into how those boundaries are drawn. So your comments and the comments of the commission given to the Board of Supervisors inform and influence how those final boundaries are drawn. So at this point, are there any questions? Is this an opportunity for questions or? Or any, I, I'll, I guess I'll open it up to the commission to see if there are any comments that commissioners would like to, to add about this. You are going to get into the specific criteria right. Correct. In, a, in a moment. So one thing I do want to mention in the overview that I, that I don't think I mentioned is the dates. So, oh, very, okay. Uh, the one thing I do want to mention is we do not have the data tonight. So tonight is not about drawing boundaries. That will happen later this year. And Dr. Vasquez will go over that in her presentation. Yeah, oh, the dates of the, the rescheduling. Hi there, me again. So um, uh, again, Dr. Lucia Vasquez, I'm a part of the uh, Lali Mojano Associates and we have been hired to do the recruitment uh, an invitation a portion of the commission. Uh, and so uh, we just wanted to give you an update that we are going out to different uh, communities and to different organizations to just explain to them what redistricting is and to invite them to participate. So if you do have an organization that you would like us to go visit, uh, please uh, uh, just get a hold of us and we can come out and give a little bit more. We're working on another little video. And if you want all the information that we have, it's on this wonderful website. And we even have a nice little QR code. So if you all know how to you know, put your camera right over the QR code that will take you directly to the web uh, page uh, so that you can kind of see everything redistricting that you wanted to know about Tulare County and also the wonderful software that we'll be having a demonstration of a little bit later. What you also have in writing uh, here on the blue that's in the back there is the next few meetings and where they're going to be. So the idea of coming out to the community to be able to get input, we are in District 1, but we will take input from anyone in the county. We just wanted to make it easier for people to come, so we're gonna be in District 1 today, and two weeks we'll be in Tulare in District 2, and two weeks after that we'll be in Visalia and so on. So you'll wanna check and see, and feel free to come to all the meetings so that you can hear the input, because it's gonna take a little bit for you to really grab the whole idea of what a community of interest is and, and how to use the software. Again, the real data for from the census that just happened is not available yet, it will, we're, hearing that by mid-September it should be. In California, there is a law that states that uh, any uh, person that is incarcerated uh, and then is out, when wherever they were on that date, uh, eventually they're, they're gonna take the time to take their numbers and to put them back into the communities where they came from, because we're assuming that when they're released they're gonna go back to those communities and those communities will need the resources. So more than likely it'll be October before we get those numbers, but if you're really interested in having a map in the software is the 2010 data and you can play with it and familiar yourself with it so that in October when that comes in you'll be ready to go. Okay, uh, any questions? We clear about that? Quick, commissioners, any questions? You guys have all heard this before. So please come back and um, we'll have time for public comment today, but please feel free uh, to hit all of our meetings. And then eventually we will have hearings and the hearings are a little different. These sessions are made for education and input listening sessions. And then the hearings, the Board of Supervisors will be joining us for the hearing so that the Board of Supervisors who will be making the final decision will be able to hear from the commissioners and hear from the public as well. Okay, next. Right now. Okay, so here we're going to pass it back to uh, Mr. Hess here so he can talk about the redistricting criteria. 
Okay, as I, as I mentioned a moment ago, the and they're up here on the screen, these are the <coughs> eight legal requirements that we have to comply with in the state of California for drawing new boundaries. And they are listed in order of statutory priority, meaning number one is the most important one with which we have to comply, and then number eight is the least important of priority. So, for example, if someone were going to challenge our boundaries, those challenges would be more serious on the, the higher ones and less serious on the lower ones. So these, I'm going to go ahead and read over them. The first one is population equality. I mentioned that one a moment ago. Equal distribution among the five districts. Pretty, it's just uh, fairly straightforward math to do when we get that data from the census later this year. Second is legal compliance. Uh, really, it's a generic sort of way of saying all boundaries have to comply with existing voting rights laws. It's sort of a catch-all to say, hey, if these boundaries don't comply, if there's some other set of legislation out there in the Voting Rights Act, these have to comply with those rather than repeating all of those Voting Rights Act requirements in the redistricting criteria. So it's a very big catch-all, but it's something that's obviously very important to the, to the drawing of boundaries. Number three is contiguity, meaning that the boundaries have to be contiguous. You see, you've probably all heard of the term gerrymandering and seen districts that look very, very peculiar. They're drawn really long or really, really odd shaped. One of the ways of avoiding gerrymandering is making sure that they're contiguous, that they're not spread out, they're not subdivided into two different kind of bubbles on a map, that there's not an area here and then an area over there. The idea being that you would minimize the opportunity for those communities of interest, which I'll talk about after this slide, you would minimize the, the electoral influence of those communities within that geographic area. Number four is community integrity. The, the idea here is that districts shall respect the geographic integrity of any local neighborhood or local community of interest. Again, a very important key phrase in redistricting and what the, what the underlying sort of philosophical purpose of redistricting is, which I'll talk about here on the next slide, is preserving the electoral influence of communities of interest doing so in a manner that minimizes its division. So for example, if, if, uh, the, if we knew, if, if the data reflected that there was a certain um, kind of community, be it ethnic community, language community, or other area where people live in a certain area of the county and they share a certain interest, if that is known via census data or other ways, that the Boundaries have to be drawn in such a way that respects the integrity of that community. You can't subdivide it or split it or what they call crack it or stack it. You can't make it so that it's no longer a community in its own sort of consolidated way. Number five, city or CDP, which stands for census designated place, integrity. The basically a city or a census designated place can't be subdivided also. For the, it, it's another way of saying that a city is itself a community of interest. Farmersville perhaps has different interests than Visalia, which has different interests than Exeter and so on with the eight cities in the county. It's not in the best interest of Farmersville or Exeter to split them in two. It wouldn't be in, uh, we're in Exeter, so I'll use it Exeter as an example, if the, let's say the, the west side of Exeter had one board member on the, on the Board of Supervisors and the east side had a different board member, that would create a kind of complication for governance structures and people who live in Exeter, obviously you do, you know, you have friends and family and you do business all throughout town, all throughout the city, so it would make no sense for one area to be making a policy decision that another area is represented by a different uh, board member. So that's the theory behind that one. Number six, identifiable boundaries. As, and these all say to the extent practicable as much as possible because obviously these are legislatures drawing these, they're writing these laws, so they've got to have some kind of wiggle room for these things. So to the extent practicable, the legislators, the state of California requires that districts be drawn in ways that if you were to look at a map, they look logical, that they follow some kind of apparent boundary. Roads are very, very common. So Highway 198, for example, very very prominent road here in Tulare County, very obvious, probably everybody knows it, everybody's familiar with how it sort of you know, goes through the county. That could be an example of a very clear boundary to, create, to use between two board districts. Similarly, natural features such as waterways can also be utilized to, to create natural boundaries between, between districts. Number seven, compactness. Uh, so 
to the extent practical, of course, and where it does not conflict with the other six criteria that we've just reviewed, they shall, the district shall be drawn to encourage geographic compactness. Um, we'll show you a couple maps here in a little bit, some, some maps that were done 10 years ago, so you can kind of see how, when we solicit maps, what the, what the process of making maps looks like, and then the final product, and how different those maps can look. So you, we had, for example, a map that was submitted 10 years ago, and we'll show it here in a moment, that had five board districts going all the way to the top of the county to all the way to the bottom. And they were really, really skinny. They were just a few miles wide. So in that case, somebody from Dinuba, for example, would have the same board member as somebody from Early Mart, which if you're familiar with sort of the geography of Tulare County, those are very far away from each other and they're not, they're not really related. You know, people don't do business in those two communities, whereas Cutler, Rossi, and Dinuba, they're, they're related to each other, they're near each other. So in that case, that would have been in violation of the compactness because you would have had citizens, voters, you would have a population all the way spread across the county with representation on the Board of Supervisors, so it would have been hard for them to influence the policy-making process. And then finally, number eight, no political parties. Basically, it's agnostic to the political party process, and so you can't draw it to make a red, a red district or a blue district or any other kind of political party district. It's, it's, not, it's not drawn in that way, and furthermore, the, the nice thing is for, to, for this effort is the Board of Supervisors are elected as nonpartisan uh, representation anyway, so for, uh, for the county, it's not really something that's taken into account for, for representation for, for our purposes anyways. But those are the eight criteria. I do want to open it up to uh, the commissioners if they want to add anything. We do have, I know Mr. Hobbs and maybe some others were involved 10 years ago, so I'd, I'd like to add, you know, have the opportunity for commissioners to, to add any comments before we move on to the next item. <clears throat> well, that, that, op or that gives me an opportunity to um, assure you, um, the, the general public, that um, this, this process, it, this has been an interesting um, process in the sense that technology has, has advanced to the point where, where redistricting is so much easier and, and so much um, lends itself so much more to complying with, with the criteria that John just presented to you um, than, than used to be the case. And uh, the, um, we're going to introduce the, the audience to the software, are we? Yes. Yep. Okay. Um, in, in a moment, you're, you're going to see what I'm talking about, but um, when I first got involved in, in, uh, in redistricting many years ago, we, we had post-it notes and, and magic markers and, and uh, we had to recalculate every time we moved a line and that was recalculating by hand. Um, that's no longer the case and there's no longer uh, the, the sizable errors in, uh, that, that occur when you have to do it in such a rudimentary or uh, um, primitive fashion. So um, this is, this is going to be neat in, in the sense that uh, even though we're getting the census data um, much later than was the case 10 years ago, um, we've, got, we've got software that will accommodate the, the shortened time frame. So. Thank you. Okay, so that is the, the eight criteria. As I mentioned, these are required by law. There have been known uh, lawsuits in, with other counties and other cities and other communities that different groups bring against the, the city or the county or whoever's boundaries they are and, you know, alleging that those boundaries are in violation of one or many of these. So these are very important for, for the commission. These are going to be something we have, and you'll uh, on our agenda. We'll have it on on the agenda for the commission nearly every time. I do want one thing. I do want to say is that the commission has the privilege of also adding additional redistricting criteria, provided they do not uh, yeah, they're not inconsistent with what's on what's in these eight. So, um, for ex for example, um, last ten years ago, we received a letter from a school district in the county. And in the same way, number five 
talks about ensuring that the cities and CDP, the census-designated places, are, are preserved as much as possible. We received a school district letter 10 years ago that said, hey, we, want, we also want to be preserved without subdividing this school district. It was a very large one. We weren't able to do it, or evidently it wasn't able to be done at that time. But that could have been another uh, criteria that the commission could have added on top and saying, hey, we also want to preserve the integrity of school districts. Perhaps those are important communities of interest within the, within the county that the, the commissioners believe is, is important to preserve. So we have that as an ongoing conversation for the commission on our agendas. The commission, the commission will, will need to, and they will be doing so, they'll be making that decision before receiving the census data. So before the census data is, is locked in and we get it in our hands from, it comes from the, the federal government to the state and then to us, because the state, I think as Dr. Vasquez mentioned earlier, they have to uh, work on the, on the data to ensure that prisoners whose home address is in Tulare County but are uh, housed or in, an inmate somewhere else are appropriately reflected in all the population throughout the, count, throughout the state. So that'll be, that'll be when we get this, the information from the state. Okay, so next item on the agenda is the communities of interest. So, oh, yes. I know we have public comments coming up, but we can, go ahead, let's take a, let's take a question. The, ci the city of Visalia is in two separate districts, which would violate uh, number five, right? Uh, but Let me, Let me it, it, but the city of Visalia's population is too big to be in a single district, right? So these, as you mentioned, are in priority order. So number one has priority over number five. Are, is that the understanding? Yes. Okay, great. Can you state your name? Miley Melkonian. Actually, I would even say the city of Visalia is subdivided into three supervisorial districts. Supervisor Macari, we're in District 1 right now, he actually has Visalia past Lover's Lane. So there's part of his district that's incorporated in the city of Visalia because the city of Visalia uh, presently probably has 140,000 people. 10 years ago, it was in the 120,000 people, maybe even 130, so it had to be divided to make sure that it wasn't having more than the rest. Good question, though, very good question. Okay, so next item is communities of interest. And I don't know, there's a, the slide doesn't have a lot, you know, doesn't have any information on there, so I will just sort of give you a verbal understanding of what that means. The, the term is a very pivotal part of the redistricting law, and it's also a very, flexible term. It is a term that has a lot of latitude to it. I can't tell this on. Um, and it can be defined or interpreted in a multitude of ways. As I mentioned earlier, ethnicity or race is typically the most common way of, of interpreting communities of interest. And that's because the demographic information that's provided in the census relies on that quite heavily. And that's an area that redistricting often receives a lot of scrutiny. But in addition to ethnicity and race, there's also language communities. There are, as I mentioned earlier, school districts. We had a letter 10 years ago that said a school district is one community of interest. So it really could be a broadly, openly defined term, but it's one that we, the commission, is going to have to be very, very sensitive to and, ve and respect the integrity of those communities of interest. As I, I'm gonna repeat it, but as I mentioned earlier, the, the underlying premise is redistricting when you draw new boundaries, they have to be done as to ensure that communities of interest, their electoral influence, their ability to elect a representative who they believe represents their community and the interests of that community are not minimized. So you can think of a million different examples, I'm sure, but if there's a community, I'm gonna make one up, if there's a community of Raiders fans somewhere <laughs> in the county and they all live in one area of the county, and we all know that, we know this is the place where the Raiders fans live, and that's all of them in the county. We can't cut that up into two or three different districts and say, hey, we don't want the Raiders fans getting a bunch of Raiders fans up on the board because then we, you know, it could be Raider County or whatever, we don't want that, and then we have to make sure that that doesn't happen, so they subdivide it up. You can't do that, but you can't also do the opposite and say, hey, we need to have one super heavy Raiders fans community. We can't have just all of them packed in one place, or Dodgers or Giants or Niners or whoever it is, that would also, it would be over influencing that community of interest would have to their their electoral influence 
would be what's called packed into one area. And so while they may, let's say, they may have been able to vote maybe two Raiders fans on the board because maybe they were large enough if they had had two different boundaries coming through. But let's say they had three, now they get none because they're not large enough to get, to get one. And that applies to any kind, of, any kind of community that you can envision throughout the county. And again, the, I'm not an attorney, but I believe the, the terms are packing and cracking are the two terms. Packing would be getting them all in one area, and then cracking would be saying, nope, we're going to cut you up so small that you no longer have enough influence to elect a member of the board who represents your community of interest. For the record, John, I feel attacked. Go Raiders. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. So that's communities of interest. I, will, uh, I don't know what's up next, but I don't think it's me. Out of order. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. All right. Um, I got to get back to my agenda. Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair, oh yeah. Yes. Um, I do have a public comment card from a Dale Simmons. You marked agenda item number four. Would you like to speak during this one? Okay. And for the record, would you state your name and address, please, before you begin? You're, you're on. It's you're on. on. Okay. My name is Dale Simmons, 1501 South Mountain Street, Visalia 93277. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you, Commissioners. Um, I was watching a, a redistricting uh, seminar today online, and um, they were t we were talking about the percent um, that is uh, a plus or minus for population. I believe it's 10%. And um, basically, I was going to recommend that you throw out all the lines and start from scratch, please. Just start from scratch. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Um, are there any or more public comments? Not at this time. Thank you. Um, I think it's uh, the next item is uh, the, the redistricting software demonstration. Um, this is, well, if, if any of you have any techie blood at all coursing through your veins, you're going you're gonna to really enjoy this. There we go. This is the, the opening place to go when you go to our new software. This software takes some of the, um, the lot of the things that I used to do on, on my own, basically, and allows more people to do it. Not just me, but it allows the public to do it, too. All you have to do is make an account. Um, I don't know who's sharing their screen. I think they're, someone else has taken over the screen from me. I think they're doing it. Scott. I keep talking. All right, we'll get to see it in a minute. But I just wanted to explain that in the past redistricting, and when you look at these maps, they're like a history of my employment with the county, all the way back to 2011. That's my map doing the redistricting. And, and uh, no, 2001, sorry, 2001 and 2011 
are both mine, and I had to do them because I had the software resources and the knowledge. But with the web now and more people having knowledge and the software vendor that we use is an expert at getting these things out to people, they really try hard. So what this is gonna allow everybody to do is go online, make them account, and use the, 20, the 2020 data when we get it to draw their own plans. So if someone does want to throw out all the, pl all the lines right now and start anew, they can. They can draw whatever kind of plan they want using this and submit it to the commission. Um, so I'll explain how to use it, although this is just, this isn't the training, this is just an example. And some people, will, this, it'll be enough. Some people might want more, and we have our trainer working on some video training. And I'll show you how to get help within the app also, so that you can kind of learn how to do it. That's why we're doing this now. So you have all this time before we get the data around mid-September to practice with what is in effect the 2010 data. So you can learn to use the software just fine based on the 2020 data, 2010 data. And then when we get the 2021 data, you should be able to fairly quickly make, because it'll be, we'll have to be quick to make some scenarios that you think, well, that fit the criteria because the software, I'll show you how the software makes you fit the criteria. So first thing I wanted to show you real quick is if to create an account, you can see, you can, hard to see, but right here is create an account. You click it right there, and then you just fill out this information, right? First name, last name, email, and you make yourself a username. Some browsers will fill a password for you and a confirm, and then some you have to make them up. It just depends. The, there's still a few things that the, our vendor is working out because we've told them some of these little things. But you just, you know, it's just like any other website. You just make yourself an account. All right, let me see. I need to open this. All right, I've got to change my sharing. Hang on. Stop share. And share this. Going back to Minnesota. Okay. There. So when you come into the file, I'll go back. I'll take a step back. Um, that's not what I want. I want to open. Once you create your username, you'll see this screen. And right here at the very top is a, um, a project I've made, Tulare County Board of Supervisors Districts. This is the, um, the lines that I drew in 2011 with the 2010 census data. So it's, what it's current we have, what we currently have, and currently the, the same numbers for the population. So I put that in there in case you want a place to start. Um, but you can just create your own plan and, and do that sort of thing and start from scratch, right? So I'm just gonna, uh, I recommend that at least at first, you open that one and then you'll have to save it with, an, with your own name and make your changes there just to get an idea and then maybe start from scratch and make your own. So I'll open that plan and it opens it up and you get to see the district, right? It's already laid out, already did all the selection work on it and everything. So down here on the bottom, you can see how these matches the colors, this is district one and the colors match and district two and the colors match, all that's all color coordinated. You can see the total populations that we got um, and as people have pointed out, we, the 5% is the deviation that we face here in Tulare County. Um, we have to get the population within 5%. And so we actually tried to get it better and usually we're able to. But you can see how far off from the ideal, which is about 88,000. I'm sure that shows up in a minute. You can see how far we're off from ideal balance, but none of them are too far off, right? And you can zoom in, right? I'm zooming in using my mouse scroll wheel. And you can see how District 4 takes a little part of North, takes part of the Oval, North Visalia. District 3 is the bulk of Visalia, and District 1 is a lot of Visalia, too. So as was pointed out, you can't, we can't really not split Visalia because of the total population. So. So then, how you want to make changes, this thing is in my way still, 
oh, I wanted to show you too that there's this learn tab. You got all the usual tabs, right? Save, save at all the tools. There's this learn tab. You go to there and it tells you a little bit about it and up in the upper right hand corner there's a question mark and you can go to this page which tells you even more and also has a tour and things like that. Things that you can, you can get help, right? Even before we get, we get the training to you, you can look there if you're the kind who wants to just go figure it out on your own. So I'll go back and then I'm going to go to view. This is sort of what it was before. It lets me view and I can... I have some things up here, but they're rarely used. What I want to really do is go here to create. And here's where, here's where the fun begins. I might want to go in here, and I know that I'm going to kind of the same thing John said, that Visalia has grown, and so some of the districts, District 3 may have to shrink, and some of that new, new growth may have to go into 1 or 4 or something like that. So we're going to imagine for, for this demonstration that District 4 needs to have a little bit of this area of District 3. So what you do is go here and choose f District 4 because you're going to work on District 4 and then you have a bunch of tools right here to let you select the census blocks. These lines, they kind of look like streets but they're actually census blocks so they're like city blocks and things like that. They may not be an exact city block but they're kind of similar and that's the smallest unit we have of data. That's the legal requirement for census data. So what I'm going to do is zoom in close so I can see this area. I'm going to use this button lets me select one at a time so I can select that block. And you can see it changes it. And if you watch, the number down here will change. But it also puts it, it shades it similar to the color, to the original color of four, but just a little different so you know that that's a new one you just added for this session. So I can just keep clicking if I want. But I can also use a, the, a regular rubber band tool that you may have seen before the, where I can draw a box and select a bunch of them. What's also I like is it's got an undo tool. That's the one that, man, I have had to undo and couldn't, didn't have a tool like that. These geographies, you can, this is a polygon tool, so I can select and select and select whatever shape I want. And it will take everything that the, uh, oh, I didn't like it. Let me see, let me try that again. Huh, that one doesn't appear to be working right at the moment. So I'll select it like that. But I have these tools that will, they're different selections. And that's why I, want you, I recommend you start with one that has districts. Otherwise, you're sort of out and floating in the air to figure out what you're doing. Um, and then once you figure it out, then you can go back and just start with a clean slate if you want. But the supervisor, the current districts are there in case you want to use that as a base. Um, if I decided I added too much, I can go back to District 3 here. The tricky part is always remembering to go back to, and choose these, right? Because you then, and you'll do it because I know I've done it. You forget to do that and you start to make a change and you realize it went to the wrong district and then you got undo or backtrack, things like that. You can also, if you're undecided about where to put something, like maybe this whole area needs changed, I can go in and choose unassigned and select this area. And then it will take them out of all the districts that, that the rubber band box um, touched. So then I can go back in and pick a district and uh, maybe slowly add them in and watch my numbers down here. Watch how they change. I'm gonna add the percentage the deviation so that you can see the percentage because um, that's really what we're aiming for right is the percentage as much as anything and then these we have these different um, characteristics already put up there there's the basically the same ones we've used in the past um, so you can sort of bounce the population and decide if you're going to draw districts with you know two districts with Hispanic majority or three or or things like that, you can sort of experiment with what you get. But when you buy, you do these different things. Um, and you can do things like change their base map. So you can add, uh, wait, you can add, oh, why do I hit it? Well, it's, I think it's going slow right now, but you should be able to add these images so you can add um, aerial photos underneath and things like that. You can even add content. Um, if you find a shape ball is what we use, you can find other things or maybe get them from some other place to put, to put on there to add, your, add some content. 
And then you, once you get all that done, anybody got any questions on how to do that? It's kind of, um, I'm impressed how simple it is. I'm impressed that everybody can do one, right? That's the cool part, because like I said, in the past, it, it just, like, like, supervised, like Commissioner Hobbs said, you had to do it by hand sometimes, and that really is work. So I can go to review, and I can look at different uh, um, graphs, right? I want to look at what's my total. Just look at, just if I want to see a graph. Um, these, the, the, it's just regraphing these statistics down here. And the colors in these graphs come straight off the blocks right here. So you can see they match, so you can sort of get an idea. I'm saying with this, plan distribution, you can get the demographics of any of the populations. These are the ones, the same ones that are on the table. I can look at the distribution of whatever um, different categories I want. Right. Oh, that one needs changed. I can run a compactness test, which is kind of an interesting idea. Um, uh, check the integrity, all these little, these are the checks that um, uh, Mr. Hess was talking about, where the legal, it, it checks the, not only the legal requirements, but the um, just, if you've made a mistake, like this dual assignment check, how I put a census block, one block in two different districts, which would be pretty hard to do, but it checks anyway. Does my population equal, right? Is it within the 5%? District count, I have five, right? I can't do one with four, can't do one with six, has to be five. And then these maximum deviations and things like that, um, see the null assignment? Well, that, like the null assignment, I failed that one, that's because I have these unassigned right here. I can't have any unassigned. Um, and the connectivity, I don't, oh, there's, see here, these little green ones should be part of part of three down here so that are part of one so they're not connected so I failed that test too. So a lot of those legal things this will automatically check it right it won't let you submit it until you actually get all the all the green checks so it enforces you to make sure there's no missed blocks there's no you know unassigned blocks that sort of thing. Which, that's really cool right helps you out because you don't just get an error that you didn't do it it actually tells you why you may have an error. And again, there's reports, there's these markup things where you can just draw a line on a map without actually selecting districts. I can choose share. This is the one that's pretty interesting too because you can make a plan and share it with other people you know, right, or your group to review the plan. You can sort of do the plan sort of in a collaboration with other people, right, your whole, without having to like all get in a group, you can do it over the net and say, oh, let's look at this plan, what do you think, what do you think I should change before you submit it? Uh, so you can, we can add groups and things like that to do that sort of thing. You can even attach files. Um, you've got a community of interest, why do you think this is a community of interest? You write something up um, or anything you think might be informational to the commission and maybe eventually to the board when they're reviewing this file. Why, is, why did you do it this way, basically, right? or anything else? And then you can submit it. So once you've passed the checks, you know, you've talked with other people if you want to, you can do it all on your own. Then you go and submit the plan and it actually goes up. It notifies, there's an a, a email that the commission will have to check. It notifies me so that I know someone submitted something. But I can't change your plan. I can only change plans under my name. All I can do is if I can look at it and then the board is going to make their decision on it. Um, so that's the basics. If anyone's got any questions, I'll try and help you out. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I assume it's okay, Mr. Chair. <laughs> Probably up there. Yes. Please. Identify yourself and your address, please. Uh, uh, Angel Ruiz, 197 NK Street, Tulare City. Um, I was playing with this tool earlier, and it's a little bit hard. I mean, my concern yeah. is for the community, right? In other words, my question is, you would have to be a demographic or someone with GIS knowledge to do stuff like this. Do we have a tool that's simpler for the community since this is a little bit difficult? This is, a, this is the only tool. It's actually a lot simpler than it was. There's a, 
Um, yes, it, it is a little complicated it, because the process is, but it's um, the only other way is doing it by hand, and we don't have it's easier to use this. Um, Hi, my name's Bob Irvine. I work for the County of Tulare, and uh, I'm over the GIS group, so Mark and I work together. Um, basically, this, this tool is a GIS tool that has been simplified down to be able to use by our commissioners and by the public even. The question that I think I heard a couple of times is, will we have some training to make this easier to use? And the answer is yes. There's going to actually be video training on how to create your account and how to make a map on your own. And also, we will have facilities available for those who want to get help. We, you know, if, if you email us, we will try to provide as much help as possible. So I'm, I'm hoping that will help. John asked about calling. The, I think that answers sort of my question, which is there will be some tutorials provided by the county, and so there will be some assistance on that. And if, if that still has some questions, if you, know, if you have questions how to use the system even after that, you can call the county. We can probably sit down for a few minutes and over the phone and kind of give you some tips. Well, I, but I do, think, um, I, I do think it needs to be stated that that's the reason the commission is in place. I mean, I, I, I would ask all of you to understand that, that a county of 400,000 people, we're not going to throw redistricting open to 400,000 people. We're, we're going to give them, act through this, you have access um, that allows you to participate in the process. But, but uh, to, to expect um, that that it would be a altogether democratic with a small d process is, is, is that that would be impossible. Would the tutorials be available in different languages? The, the training? Yeah. It, yeah, in written we will, but I don't know about the video, yeah. Yeah, we don't really know that yet, um, so we'll have to look and see. Yeah. But the website is just like you see right now, so it's not multilingual. Yes, yes, by all means. Uh, thank you, Mr. Hobbs. Angel again, 197 in Kate Street. Um, my follow-up question is, so uh, earlier, the gentleman said that the community could submit their maps once they're drawn and you know once they did what they did ever they needed to do. So my question is, since they submit their maps, what would be the advantage of them submitting their maps if you're telling us that this is why we have a a committee where so the community the the say the maps that they'll submit, they're not gonna be taken into consideration? No, no not at all. What, what I am saying, though, is that this is your, this is your opportunity to submit, um, as, as you said, and, and your submittal will be taken into consideration, just as anyone else's would. But what, what I was trying to convey was the, the cumbersomeness of, of having, having 400 and, 35,000 or 480,000 or whatever the population of the county is, um, submittals um, when, when you've got a commission in place to, to do the heavy lifting. Mr. So, Chair, Chair uh, Scott James, can I make a comment? Yes, by all means. So to, you know, to help uh, answer that question from the public, um, you know, these, these guys over here and IT, GIS, they've been working very hard at getting this done. And uh, this is only our second time that we've been able to see this. So we got to give them just a little bit of time. But if you, if you bear with all of us, 
throughout this process because these decisions aren't happening tomorrow or next month. Um, I'm, I'm confident, we're confident that they'll get it dialed in um, and, and it looks like it's going to be really user friendly and there's going to be some bugs but they're working those bugs out and with the vendor. Uh, but in regards with what we're doing, absolutely that's why these, uh, we're having these meetings in every district so we can get your feedback because it is important because it, it is all of your county um, and we're just here to represent those different those different areas so um, bear with us I think they got it under control and uh, we'll be rocking and rolling pretty soon thank you right and maybe if I could add to that uh, remember all of those rules that we talked about earlier you can't submit a plan that doesn't meet those criteria so so it's not like there's going to be 450,000 plans no, I, I knew. They, they have to meet the criteria you can't create plans that would not meet that criteria so as you go through the process it it will keep telling you no you have a problem here or a problem there and you're gonna have to fix that problem which is what we dealt with in GIS before, right? We, we, it's a very difficult process because you have to re-add up all of those census blocks each time, and that's what the software is doing for us now and making this process much easier. I can't even imagine doing it on yellow sticky notes. That would be wildly difficult. I would, I would also like to add, I agree. You know, I'm familiar with it. I've been using a similar version of this for a long time, and so... It's sort of natural to me, um, but it is hard to learn because the concepts of it and visualizing things like these is is tough to learn. So I would, I would recommend getting in right, establishing count, getting in, start playing with the tools. All the only thing you can you can always just not save your edits, right? You can all just mess around with it, and then use that help I I talked about the little um, the little this little uh, question mark up here. You can see I went to create a plan, and Esri does, their main problem with their help is they word every little thing, and sometimes you miss one word and, you're, and you kind of get off. But they have extensive help here that can get you going. Um, and there's other help, too, that will certainly help you any chance we get, because we want as many plans. Right? We want people to submit good plans. Like, like Bob said, you're going to have to submit a good plan, a software won't, won't let you, at least a usable plan, maybe not necessarily a good one, right? Because I mean, I've submitted bad ones. <laughs> but uh, just work with it so that you're ready to go when the census data does come in, is what I would recommend. Just, just a moment, please. Commissioner Diaz has a comment. Yes, yeah, so I would, I would uh, I don't know where the authority sits on where one would uh, get the approval to, to ensure that we do have a bilingual uh, training component for the communities because uh, what I believe is the purpose of these meetings here is to receive as much information and uh, that individual's view of how the line should be drawn as a recommendation to the Commission who in turn will make the recommendation to the Board of Supervisors because you know your community's best you know that your city's best I don't I'm familiar with this area I'm familiar with others but you know your areas best so um, you know, if we could you know, receive those uh, maps, it'd be, it would help me, and I'm sure it would help the other commissioners uh, to take a look at what some of the recommendations would be when we make these final recommendations. Okay. I guess, yeah. Okay. Miley Melkonian again. Uh, um, it seems to me that it will be a rare uh, resident of Tulare County who will be enthusiastic about creating five whole districts and meeting all those criteria in order to do it. It seems to me that it will be a more uh, plausible citizen resident of the county who would be interested in maybe one corner of the county. Let's say Oh, two communities who are currently divided by a district line and they think they should be in the same district. But in order to use this software, is my understanding correct that in order to draw a district, 
with both communities in the same district, they would then have to smudge all the other lines until they meet those six criteria so that they can pass it along, in which case they, this hypothetical resident probably doesn't care about the other part of the county, but by the time the map arrives to the commissioners, they're going to assume equal weight in this opinion represented by this map that the smudging part will get equal weight by the commissioners as the meticulously conceptualized two communities that should be together. Is there no way that a, a resident of Tulare County can communicate a, a, a suggestion for a small part of the county without having to draw five complete district maps. Yes, John. So the for the submission of maps, absolutely. There's there's no there's no requirement for members of the public or anybody interested to only use the the GIS system. So if for if a member of the public wanted to draw on a printout, that's absolutely acceptable, and, and that was done ten years ago as well. It then becomes uh, you know Mr. Uh, Mr. Clark unfortunately has the pleasure then of then converting it to a GIS map. So then he gets the fun of moving all the boundaries around. But certainly that's an opportunity for members of the public who say you know what, this GIS system is really complicated. I really feel strongly about giving a map, but I don't want to use the system. I'll draw on a, on a physical map. And perhaps what we can do, I'm, I'm putting more work on Mr. Clark here, but perhaps what we can do is put a, a blank map on the, on, the, on the website that they could download and print out with maybe the streets on there. Or in this hypothetical, where uh, two communities are currently split into two different districts and they want to be in one, is there a way that this can be communicated even without a map that it would get equal weight by the commissioners to these GIS maps? John? Oh, sorry. Um, just a moment, Darlene. Yes, and, and it's a process we've been following since the very beginning. If, if they're if they feel strongly about their community of interest and the, the software is, is just beyond them or they don't wish to use it for whatever reason, absolutely bring, bring the concern about the community of interest or, or whatever the current concern may be to, to the commission. We will consider it as we consider all input from all citizens and there you have it. And I how mean, should that be communicated? In any way the citizen likes. We're have, we have meetings where, where um, public comment is allowed. You can submit it in writing. Man, let, let me tell you, I, I understand that, you know, map drawing isn't going to be for everybody. Um, okay. if, if you if, say if, if you really think that that, uh, that, that Woodlake and early Mart should be in the same district and I'm just using that hypothetical to, to be as apolitical as possible um, but you don't want to draw a whole map they, then keep doing exactly what you're doing have everybody else that's interested in that thing you know come make your public comments talk to your supervisors talk to your redistricting commissioners that that's the way to do it the map drawing is for for you know yeah, as, as I, I said know. that's for the that's for the more technologically savvy of us that's not going to be everybody, but the good old-fashioned way of coming up and making yourself heard, that still works. That will be given equal weight, I assure you. Equal weight? Absolutely. Okay. Equal weight, everybody. Um, so the commission okay. will be, they will be making several maps. That's the, that's the intent, at least right now. The, the number of maps is not yet under, known, but the, the commission last time, I think it was uh, four or five maps ten years ago, and so those all have different boundary iterations. And so it's quite possible, for example, if you were to make that suggestion that, that Matt just made, which is, hey, Early Martin Woodlake have to be in the same district. I feel super strongly about that. And let's say the commissioner said, okay, we, we heard from 99 people that that was the case. We really want to include that so that the Board of Supervisors hears that and sees that when they have the final project, then they would make a map that possibly includes that. That's one of their five. John, ma'am, yep. 
I was going to say, if you got the magic mat, bring it forward. Make all of our jobs easy. Well, maybe uh, um, just I'm a circle around the early Mart and Woodlake and hand you that map. <laughs> we, yeah. we had originally intended for public comment to be limited to three minutes per individual. Sure. You've exceeded that. Sure. Okay. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. So, if I may, uh, again, we're all new at this, so just so we know, we had a presentation from staff. If there's any clarifications that needs to happen to staff, then we're going to take public comment, and then, in all fairness, then we'll let the commissioner speak so that all commissioners can be seen because it's really hard for the chair to see the commissioners so that people can raise their hands. So we'll go ahead and go with a three-minute for the public comment. If we can get response from the staff to answer that, that would be great, and then we will give the commissioners a chance yeah. to ask their questions. Uh, Thank response you. from staff succinctly, please. So do it. Okay. Um, Dini Souza from Visalia. Uh, first of all, I want to thank all of you for volunteering your time to do that. That's awesome. Um, meet the hypothetical person from Tulare County who can't wait to schmooze the map. Um, I do have a question of clarification. It's probably for the council, and it has a direct question regarding how to get the information to the commissioners. Is it best to contact our commissioner from our specific district and talk to them and tell them what our concerns, you know, suggestions would be? Or is it best to come to public comment, which I think would be good, but also when drawing that map, should we also go to our commissioners? Is it, is it, is it treated the same as like a supervisor? You, you are speaking to the commissioners now, okay. and I'm sure there's an email, and uh, for those of you, the, this, this little thing was, uh, again, to get you to the, um, to the maps, but you can also send stuff via email, right? But this is how you address the commissioners. Okay, so because you Because we can't have serial meetings, we can't, so, so this is- Don't you, send, here. even though they listed all those emails on there, don't send you all emails on how we feel, is that? Right, send it to the commission. There's a commission website should be there, correct? Mr. Turney? They, they need to go to the commission as a whole, or there's to the clerk, uh, to Clerk Benson is where, is where that stuff should go. And we'll make that clear on the website so that people know, submit your stuff here. Okay. The the uh, we are live, so we wanna mm -hmm. make sure people can hear. The emails are, they're public emails, they're published. There's, there's nothing stopping you from sending an email to any commissioner you want. There's no guarantee that each commissioner is going to be, you know, as there's not going, there's no guarantee of how quickly a commissioner would get back to you um, or how, you know, how, what kind of a use they're gonna make of that email address. So if you, if you use the, uh, it's the, the clerk's email address, I believe, if you, if you use that, that, that will be, that will, we know that will be monitored as a county. We don't know how closely each commissioner is gonna monitor their email. My second question is will, as you all are drawing maps, will you be sharing those with the public and, how, and will we be able to see those on this website? That's a question that yes, I'm gonna I can, I can answer that. The, the answer at this point is that's the intention is that as the, as the commission draws their maps, it'll be done at meetings like this, and those meetings will be in the fall, September, October. They'll probably be a little longer because it'll be done in real time and live time. Um, so yeah, the, the intention is for all map drawing done by the commission to be done in public. Staff may draw maps from time to time as we get information and then present them to the commission in public as well, but all of it will be presented to the public. Understood, thank you. I wanna quickly just backtrack real quick. We do, we did just recently this week create an open um, email address. It's just simply, if I recall, redistricting at tulerycounty.ca.gov. And I'm looking at our clerk of the board. She's nodding, she's giving me thumbs up. She's saying absolutely that's the place to go. So we'll put that on the agenda going forward. That's gonna be an easy place for you to give any kind of questions or comments. If you have a specific comment for any commissioner, I, I mean, I, I'm looking at them and I hope this is okay, but you can, you can access them and that's the, that's the reason why they volunteered is to be a resource to you. Public 
I'm what? I need to share my screen again real quick. I, I, we, there was something I didn't quite get to that will, that will drive you crazy because it drives me crazy. And I want to point it out in case someone's going to try on their own. Can I share now? Are you going to go back to me? Not yet. Here we go. Right here. I only want I only want to go back and do it because if you get frustrated with the software, you're going to give up, right? Um, and I, I prefer not to do that. If you look at, at me, I'm trying to, if I try and use my mouse to move the map around, and I'm still using this tool, the selection tools, all it does is select. I can't actually move the map. So it, it's critical when you want to just move the map around to look at a different spot. Then you go back up here and, hit, and use this hand, pan the map, and then drag it around. There's been many times where I've been over here, and I'm like, oh, I just need to look over here, and I draw instead, right? And I don't want to select. So I can hit undo and make sure you go back to right there because I want to point that out because that, that little mistake might never be in the help or never be obvious in the help. And rather than you sitting there at home going crazy, not being able to move the map, I want you to at least have an idea. You can go back to that pan tool and uh, move the map. So you've got to switch back and forth, click selecting tools. Thank you. Yes, if you'll come to the podium and say, state your name and sure. address. Hello. Uh, is this good enough? My name is Dave Pruitt. David Pruitt, I'm uh, from Visalia, 3117 East Grove Avenue, uh, east of Lover's Lane. And I, I had uh, two points to make. Uh, first, I can't think of a time in our state where the importance of people with integrity and uh, commitment uh, stand up uh, to serve in leadership. And at the same time, I can't think of another time where doing so can be so dangerous to the individual with Facebook and, and all the internet stuff out there. It is a dangerous time to be in leadership and take hits when you do something unpopular. So I want to say I really appreciate you all being here and willing to serve in this capacity. Uh, the second point I want to make is that I believe that an unelected commission, as yourselves, making significant changes in the body politic is fraught with danger. And so I, I want to encourage you as the year unfolds before you uh, to go after your goals, the, the eight criteria. Go after them with gusto. Balance the population meet the needs of communities of interest, uh, check all the boxes with gusto, but do it with the smallest amount of change to the current body politic. And I think that will be a key to your success. Thank you very much for your service. So we'll take the next public comment and then if you submitted a card to the clerk, we'll ask for those folks um, next. Hello everyone, my name is Manuel Angel Galvez. I go by Angel. I live at, well I live in Merton Valley in a ranch, but my address is 213, it's P.O. Box 213 uh, here in Exeter. I've always lived in District 1. I uh, grew up in Woodville Labor Camp. Now I have the pleasure of living in a ranch where the rattlesnakes keep me up at night. <laughs> I, uh, I uh, represent the uh, League of United Latin American Citizens, Council 3294. My comments as a president of the council are only for that council. We have four councils in our district, three, one in Porterville, one in Tulare, one in Visalia, and the other in Bakersfield. Our district is rather large. My question is whether or not, well, before that, uh, I just want to really appreciate the transparency of the discussion. There was quite much spoken today that wasn't on the agenda, and I think that's very helpful for community members to really trust the, uh, the process. 
Um, I don't specifically have any questions regarding the elements of how the decisions will be made, but I do, uh, I do want to ask, um, in terms of weight, whether or not our comments can represent also the constituency that our council represents. So, um, so that's the first question, is whether or not what the council submits in formal letterhead will those uh, represent all of the members of our council. We are a 501c3 nonprofit organization. And, uh, and so I'll give the commission, specifically District 1, since I'm more interested in my district than I am of the overall county, uh, to, to, to see what, what you have to say about that. Well, does the District 1 commissioners want to speak directly to that? I'll take a shot at it. Angel, nice to meet you. Likewise. So I think um, forums like this, receiving input uh, from the community is the purpose of this commission, to hear. Uh, we come in here as citizens of the communities we live in now with one perspective, and we're all learning this redistricting uh, thing ourselves. But to hear input from you and your organization and others, it grows, you know, it grows my knowledge base on how uh, lines are drawn in accordance with the priorities that we're required to. So yeah, your input is valuable to me, and I'm sure it is to, to my colleague here in the district. And um, we all love our communities, but in the end, we are all citizens of Tulare County. And as a county, we must work together. So I, I welcome your input. I appreciate that. Um, I, will, I will say that I will take this back to our board Typically, um, I can represent my own council, but if the board, the other councils as a district support the action item, uh, it is possible that our attorneys could package a, a overall support for all of the councils, which create more constituency for us as a whole, and that you know, we'll submit those to the proper, uh, to the proper uh, emails I do, I do believe that um, most of the councils will be at every meeting. Since I live here, they, they chose, uh, they, they allowed, I shouldn't say chose, they allowed for me to have the honor of just really representing uh, LULAC, but not only that, representing the fact that I live in District 1 and, and allowing my voice to be heard in front of you all. So I, I really appreciate your time. And uh, I hope to um, be invited, and at the same time, I open the invitation for our council meetings, for you all to perhaps present some of this information to our uh, folks that are members of LULAC. Um, that, that certainly could be um, another way to, to get your message out. Unfortunately, um, many times, and you know, I wish this room was full of people, but as you, as you all might know, sometimes it's difficult for people to make these meetings, uh, whether they are in the morning or in the evening. Nonetheless, um, you know, they've, uh, we volunteered our time to, to be delegated that responsibility. So I just conclude by, by really saying thank you. I hope that um, the comments from our letter and LULAC uh, can all be, um, can all be uh, uh, weighed into the decision-making process that has been bestowed to you all. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Clerk, do we uh, do we have any other? I do have a comment, comment card cards? from Lily Hart. Okay, okay. Uh, she doesn't want to speak, and I do have um, a speaker um, via Zoom. So we will give me just a moment. Hold on. Olivia Seedman, if you can unmute your mic. Olivia Seedman. Hi. I'm. Hi. It says I'm unmuted. You are. You are now.
process um, in order to make the, the hearings more accessible for folks who maybe can't um, travel to the meetings in person. Um, I would also like to suggest that um, uh, the slides be available in other languages, namely if you could have bilingual slides during the meetings, that would be great, in English, Spanish. Um, other languages such as Punjabi with large populations in Tulare County would also be great. Um, and it sounds like uh, y'all have a pretty robust plan to do outreach to individual communities. Um, I'd like to um, advocate for that to continue throughout the process. Um, I want to echo a comment made earlier about the uh, mapping tool being a little bit difficult to use. It seems like something that someone needs kind of demographic, de demographer experience to use. Um, and thinking about other ways, uh, maybe paper maps or other maybe simpler tools for folks to, to use at public hearings so that people who don't necessarily have the tech skills to work um, a really complicated tool are still able to participate in the COI mapping process. Um, I think those are my comments. Thank you again for um, the good public engagement and um, we look forward to continuing to see the outreach y'all do in many different languages throughout the redistricting process. Thank you so much. Thank you. Anyone else? I believe we have a, a Dina Souza would like to speak. Dini Souza Visalia. Um, I guess I have one more question. Um, in looking at the redistricting process, I just, w the, the communities of interest is um, something that, you know, I, I agree with what Angel said earlier. We are still part of Tulare County. And I hate to see our community divided so much. And there's so many divisions that are going on. I realize that there are so many things that we need to pay attention to, and um, there are people that need to be heard and that need to have different services, and that's part of what this redistricting brings about. And I want to encourage all of you to really watch that, but I also want you to remember that we are all Tulare County as well, and we're all part of this community, and I would hate to see us become more divided than we actually need to be and using this as one of those opportunities to divide us. I'd just like to see us do a great job of redistricting our supervisors. Thank you. Yes, sir. Good evening, uh, Greg Gomez, City of Farmersville. And I guess I had a question about the, um, when it comes to the mapping tool. It's a presentation tool, so um, you know, it's only as good as the data behind it. Dr. Vasquez uh, told us that the census data won't be in until October. So is, it, is, is the representation that we're looking at a projection of what Esri thinks that the census figures will look like? Or is it based off the 2010 data? What's loaded currently is the 2010 data. And all of this will be wiped clean and reloaded when we get the census data and then the actual process will begin and people will be able to create real maps at that time. Up until that time, consider this test or a, a playground or a sandbox or whatever you'd like to call it. Okay, and, and the, the other part of my question is, um, since the census figures won't be out until um, October, will we be afforded the opportunity after they come out to, um, to uh, you know, give public input into how we feel um, the, the district should be carved up or, or adjusted. Absolutely. And, and, and also, I'm, I'm part of that too, um, on the website there isn't really a timeline as far as you know, what, we're, what we as the public are supposed to expect over the next several months while this process happens. So um, I think if we were to get some kind of um, you know, idea of what that would look like, I think that would help, um, and especially given more public opportunity like this, and thank you so much for giving us this chance to, to speak to you all. Um, I think it, it, it would give our communities um, you know, greater voice in this process. Thank you. Let me speak to your uh, comment. Um, I, speaking for all the commissioners, we'd like a timeline too, um, but 
but staff is, is really handcuffed. And, and until we get the data we need in, or, in order to begin the process, um, drawing a timeline is pretty speculative. So, John? We do have a timeline that's been provided to the Board of Supervisors as well as the, as the Commission. And I, it, I don't know if it's on the, the website, but it's, it surely should be on the website. And so we'll make sure that it gets on there. As, as Commissioner Hobbs mentioned, it is draft. We are doing our best to, to sort of outline the, the process. Currently, the process is for the commission to meet every two weeks on a Thursday, 6.30, various different communities. And then beginning, I believe, in October, perhaps sometime September, October, they'll meet weekly. And that's where, to answer your question, that when we do receive the census data, their, their activities will go uh, much faster. They'll be working on those every week in, in these type of forums, these types of settings. Thank you. But the commission will be open to your input uh, um, throughout the process. So um, that's, that's not, I, I uh, urge you not to worry about that. We're, we're open to your input uh, and will be throughout the process. We did receive a written comment that I will read out for the commissioners, and it's um, from Lori Pisanti. And her question is, or comment is, will Tulare County be making use of data submitted to the state commission? No. I mean, the data submitted to the state commission is of, of virtually no value to us. It has to do with state district. Yeah. I mean, there, there are state senate districts and state assembly districts and congressional districts, and all of that is uh, beyond our pay grade. Any other public comments? We have no other public comments on Zoom or online. My name is Melody Gillespie, and I'm uh, the president of Porterville Area Republican Assembly. We're, we're following the redistricting. And uh, anyway, uh, I'm from Porterville. And uh, I talked to Sheriff Boudreau. He said we have 600,000 in this county at this time. So I think you have a bigger job than what you think. <clears throat> well, what, whatever the number is, we're going to divide it by five. <laughs> okay. Excuse me. Uh, if there's no further comment from the public or the audience, uh, um, I will entertain comments from commissioners. You've been waiting patiently all, nearly all evening. Um, please. It's a, a question to Ms. Mojano and Dr. Vasquez. Uh, uh, considering your workload uh, in response to Mrs. Sosa, Sousa, uh, can they reach out to you and request an outreach meeting so that her group or the group that she's involved with uh, can uh, bring up issues or questions and ideas to, to us? Yes, and I, I said that earlier, we are open to invitations. Uh, I think Lulek also asked if there's a way to come out. So yes, we are open. And um, I understand that you, you have a, a La Mojano's number and we would love to come to any groups that you have. So please, you have the redistricting uh, email as well. Uh, there will be more videos on the uh, website soon, but we would love to come in person or come to Zoom or whatever you're comfortable with. And that goes for any of you. Thank you. And one last question, and if staff can answer the question is a person who speaks today or any other time, is it necessary for them to give out their home address uh, for, for safety reasons and just, you know, their name is, I think, for me, is sufficient enough information for them to identify or what city they're from and that's it. I don't believe that they should bring out their home address. Particularly, this is gonna be uploaded into the internet and you don't wanna have, you know, Typically at, at city council meetings uh, throughout the county, um, they they ask for it, but nobody is a, is obliged okay. to to give it if they choose not to. Okay. Sorry. The only reason we do 
ask for it at all is in the event that we need to respond to a comment. The typically Board of Supervisors, I, I don't know about City Council, but Board of Supervisors don't typically respond to public comments in the meeting. So they say, hey, if we can get your address, we'll we'll be able to get in touch with you after the meeting. It's not, there's no requirement whatsoever. If somebody says, hey, I don't want to do that, there's no reason okay. they can, they are totally free to, to not do that. Okay. Thank Mr. You. Chair, I have a comment. Please. Um, you know, I, we heard a lot of comments tonight, uh, and you have a lot of questions, a lot of concerns. Uh, we all up here still have a lot of questions. Uh, I can assure you from what we've been uh, given so far as our third meeting, the staff is just doing an awesome job. And our understanding from the very beginning, we're ahead of all the other counties throughout California. I mean, we're like, we're. So we're, we're getting a jump on it, thanks to the staff, uh, but we're all learning this together, so. I'd like to echo the comment about staff. I've, uh, I've been involved in this process in, um, in California and Minnesota, um, and uh, I, I can honestly say that uh, you guys are the best I've encountered in, uh, in all my travels, so. Keep on keeping on. John, I've got uh, Rodney Blaco, District 1. I don't know if this is appropriate for now with Commissioner comment or administrative matters, but three items from the discussion tonight uh, for staff that I think would help uh, streamline the meetings uh, with the same concerns that come up over and over again is, one, creating a document for submission protocol, so that way we can just direct people to a single document. Here's where you can email. Here's how you can submit to make it easy. Two is... Uh, the ability to comment on the maps. Uh, the, uh, I, I apologize, I forget your name, but her comment on focusing on one district. So if she was going to submit a map with a comment that said, I was only focused on District 9, right? So not to be political, to po point to one, but uh, my submission is only these criteria and these particular groups, then looking at that map, we would know that the concerns are those two communities of Dinuba and Early Mart, and it involves these specific community uh, interest groups. So that way we could take that map in context and look at just that district. Uh, and my last one was the comment on the bilingual videos, if staff can come back to us and let us know the, the feasibility or viability of providing uh, even if it's a five-minute video uh, to, to help the staff, you know, the community. If we had answers for that at each of these community meetings, it would streamline those topics. We wouldn't have to, to fumble with them, uh, to use a you know, term of art, and you know, smudge them together uh, to, and provide a, a, a consistent response to the community. Thank you. And uh, to yes, piggyback sir. off of Rodney, uh, we talk about bilingual slides and all that, but um, you know, I feel Spanish and English get all the love. We need to give the Hmong community and the Punjabi community some attention as well and the proper resources to participate. We will be uh, doing some, uh, making sure we have Tagalog um, translators when we go to that area as well. Commissioner. You know, we've had this issue before. Um, and I think on your website, if you don't put things on the website as PDFs, there is a button that transfers everything on your website to hundreds of languages, and it, and it, and it works. Um, we've used it for other public meetings, so I'm sure you have that. And maybe there's a direct link um, on that homepage for the redistricting commission. Anyone else? Your chair cannot see you, so if you need to speak, put yeah, your hand um, up, so I'm ricocheting. <laughs> raise your hand or stand up or jump up and down. Anyone else? Okay. Seeing uh, none. Mr. Chair, do you want to take a little break here, and we'll yeah, come back. Uh, and just so you know, the, the, the next um, uh, areas is so that we can discuss and you guys can make decisions or, or give staff more directive. That's right. what that other section is for. And at the end, we're going to do a plus delta so we can have feedback on how the meeting went. But if you want to go ahead and take a five-minute break. We're going to recess for five minutes.
Yep, it's on now. Where am I? <laughs> okay, um, item six on the agenda um, is administrative matters, um, discussion items. Uh, A is to administrative matters. Um, what uh, what do you have in store for us? I'll there? make it as fast as possible. We have nothing new for the board tonight. There were plenty of comments provided by the public and some, some administrative comments about emails and language translation okay. and pro providing things online. So there were absolutely some things that we will be responding to and, and including as administrative and providing an update to the commission in two weeks. Okay, and you'll report Yeah, correct. And Dr. Vasquez reminded me that this is also your opportunity to direct staff to say, administratively, please handle this, this, and this. You know, right. same thing of the translation, things of that matter. Um, please, please give a sense of urgency to the language issue. You might want to give the commissioners, if anybody didn't get a chance to, again, direct staff. Uh, we've heard, uh, you know, bilingual slides. Uh, we've heard... Uh, those things. So if anybody else didn't get a chance as a commissioner to include things, now would be the time, formally. Yeah, I wanted um, Commissioner Elizabeth Gomez, at large member, um, I wanted to revisit the tutorials for the mapping tool um, and access to, to different languages translation as well. Anyone else? All right. And also, um, if we could get again the estimate of the time of availability for those tutorials too. I believe in the last meeting, we talked about it sometime in August or September, but just if there's an update on that. Anything else? All right, uh, legal matters. Any? Council's indicating no legal comments at this time. Any? Similarly, any comments that the commission has for council, questions that you'd want us to look into further? Do, you, do any of the commissioners have comments uh, they wish to make to our council? I would just recommend that council stand up if we're going off kilter somewhere. So before we make a, a, a significant mistake, he waves us or flags us uh, and not waiting for us to make eye contact. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe just install some little electrical it's devices that shock us. Um, part of your charge uh, as legal counsel, I, I had a friend who was a city attorney in Bradenton Beach, Florida, and he, he said, part of my job is to keep the council from, in addition to keeping it all legal is to keep them from doing anything stupid. So if you would uh, take that under consideration. I, um, <clears throat> additional re redistricting criteria, um, I, don't, I don't think we're, we're ready for that yet. Um, so unless somebody's got a comment on additional criteria, we'll m move on. Um, and review of proposed submitted and final 2010 redistricting maps. If that's all the information that's in our agenda packet. Correct. So, Do Mr. we need to take official action on that? It is not an action item, Mr. Chair. We have on the screen, we've provided uh, several, just for informational purposes, just for educational purposes, several maps associated with past redistricting efforts. And we wanted to present these to you under this item to not only educate you, but to let you know that these are sort of the, the process that it can look like when public submits map, as you do, as you do map drawings, just sort of a real quick two minute way of looking some of the history. I find it personally uh, interesting, and I hope it's something that's interesting to, to you all. So uh, this is the first slide. This was done in 2001, so this is 20 years ago. Not a whole lot to, to go over, but if we go to the next slide, that's what was done. This is the current Board of Supervisors map. Some of the changes, I'm not gonna highlight all of them, but some of the changes are Rich Grove, a small unincorporated community down in the southern part of the county, 
moved district representatives, went from District 2 to 5. Woodville was mentioned earlier. Woodville moved just a, a small amount to District 1. I think it was in District 5 as well. Um, Visalia changed a lot. And so we're, as a pattern, if we're using history as a way to educate, you know, inform sort of future decisions, that's going to be the case, is we're going to see, see changes along the way. And I'm going to ask the clerk to keep clicking. The next map was one that was uh, provided by the commission. This was plan B provided by the commission in 2011. It is a little different than what was actually adopted. No, nothing major, but it was, was some differences from what was adopted. Next slide. You'll see that the purple moved quite a bit there. It, it grew all the way to the north such that that purple, I don't know which district, District 1, the district we're presently in, would have Farmersville and Exer, but it would also go all the way up and capture Cutler, Rossi, and so forth. So there's an iteration that, and these all, I believe, were consistent with those bottom data uh, qualifications. So even though they look geographically very, very different, they were all they all met the criteria. And so I think I, that was a, perhaps the most important point that I wanted to make with these is that those, those district criteria, those criteria are written in such a way that you could have theoretically a variety of maps drawn in very different ways that are all permissible, that are all legally acceptable. So next slide. Another one that was uh, provided by the commission, it was provided by the commission uh, to the uh, Board of Supervisors. There was a whole lot of discussion 10 years ago, and perhaps the chairman can, can uh, provide a little history on that. I, don't, I wasn't there, but there was a whole, apparently a lot of discussion about Visalia 10 years ago, and, and it may have been the, the comment that was provided earlier that because Visalia is larger, we know it's gonna have to be multiple districts, and Visalia has, if anybody's familiar with the geography of Visalia, it has neighborhoods of interest in, in within its own boundaries. So I, I imagine what the commission was trying to do is accommodate those various different neighborhoods without splitting them up in some, in some way that disrespects or, or undermines the integrity of those communities of interest. Next slide. Another one, moving North Visalia into Angoshan into one district. Uh, splitting Visalia, you'll see kind of a southern boundary, kind of a wide southern, it's that, that pink red looking boundary a large southern one, splitting it down the middle, and District 4, which would right now, it goes all the way to the mountains, would be a really small district of Dinuba, Goshen, and North Visalia. So it'd be kind of a little, you'd be splitting up uh, Visalia in a, in a strange way, in my opinion, anyways. Next slide. This is the one I mentioned earlier the, that was provided to us. I just love it because it's just it just shows you how some people are creative. Some people get some maps that are really, really different, or at least in my, in my view, very different. You can see that purple going all the way from Dinuba down to Early Mart. That orange one is, I don't know, you could probably throw a football from one side to the other of that district, and when it gets so skinny right there, it gets really, really narrow. The pink one, same thing, and then you have this massive green all of the mountain communities. So if you're familiar with our mountain geography, you've got communities all the way down at the South, Posey, Idlewild, even California Hot Springs, and then you have communities all the way to the North, Badger and Heartland. They're not people in those communities, they live in the mountains, sure, but that's about all that they share in relation to each other. So it would be perhaps not in their interest to, to put them in the, same, in the same district. But, and I don't know if we have this included in the, in the slides, the gentleman who put this forward, Mr. Olmschneider, his argument, he put a really, he put a thorough, here it is, he put a thorough rationale as to why he made it this way. So out of respect for, he put thought into this. He did actually think about the criteria and how this map in his mind honored that criteria in the best way. His argument, I, I haven't read this in a little while, but I suppose for the mountain communities, for example, would be sure they may be far away from each other, but they share similar fire hazard concerns, water concerns, and so forth. So those public policies would be of, of universal interest to somebody who lives in the mountain communities, even though they may be far away from each other. So those, Mr. Chair, were just provided mostly as a way to kind of educate and inform as to how districts can be drawn and, and look very, very different among those scenarios. Thank you. All right. Uh, future items. 
Item seven on the agenda, future items. Okay, um, so th that's me. So just to remind you that the next meeting will be in two weeks in Tulare at the Tulare, what's the site? July 1st. And you have the address here so that you have them all, but um, the International Agri Center at the Social Hall, you know that place is really huge. But again, at 6.30 and that will be in two weeks on July 1st. Um, and then, uh, Mr. Chair, it's not on the schedule, but we'd like to put a plus delta when we're done with this section. For the future items. Excuse me? Uh, a pl an evaluation. Oh. I, I, I'm requesting a, a quick evaluation. Okay. Okay, so if, unless there's any comments, you want to ask for uh, any comments on anything else on well, 7? We've uh, had public comment, and I failed to close the public comment, so I'm going to do that right now. Okay. Um, so if there's, if there's uh, anything, future items that you would like to add, uh, again, this is our first uh, educational and li listening session. So two things we want to do is that future items, and if there's any other categories you would like to add, this is the administrative time to do that for any of the commissioners. Nothing? Okay. And then the other thing is I'd like to do a quick plus delta. It's just a quick evaluation tool. So take 20 seconds and just tell me some, what you liked about today and what would you change. And right. we're just You're gonna, asking the commissioners. I'm asking each one of the commissioners. It's right. just a quick round robin. What did you like? One thing you liked about today and one thing that you would change. I like the air conditioning. <laughs> I like the coffee. Thank you very much. The coffee and when the water. Mm -hmm. Appreciate that. But and uh, put us in a horseshoe so we can see each other next time. Okay, that's the change. Uh, I like the uh, public engagement, and I would fix and provide the community with a handout with some of the key questions that we're going to see over and over again with, with responses like to those. Like a Q and A, uh, but hand uh, basic handout facts or in the okay. Uh, so I can see the other commissioners. I'd go along with the horseshoe. Yep. Okay. Uh, anything positive about today? Anything positive? Mm -hmm. What you like oh, about today? Um, I, I, I thought uh, was it was great having input from the community. Okay, great. Um, I also uh, was really happy to see members of the community. I think there were at least 22 at one point here, and it's rare at these meetings when there's not a lot of it's just informational at this point for people to come out and spend their time. So that was a plus. Um, as a what did you call it a, a minus a, a, a what would you change what would delta? i change mm -hmm. i would change a little bit of the format and maybe ask that the that the staff before you talk maybe go through the chair when we have questions so there's a little bit more control it kind of got a little mm -hmm. crazy there mm -hmm. and we're gonna we're gonna meet now with the chair and the vp just to kind of go through the roles Great. okay let's delta yeah i also appreciated um the engagement with the with community members, um, the diversity of folks that, that did speak. Um, and I think for next time, I'm just thinking of folks maybe in the audience that don't speak English, um, if in person when we invite them, if um, maybe Lucia, if you do speak Spanish, you can do that or um, yeah. Mm -hmm. We do have a translator that's translating everything live okay. uh, to go to Zoom and we're working on how, if we just have comments in Spanish, we can do that, yes. Yeah, thank you, Lucia. Okay. Thank you. Put your mic closer to you, please. Uh, I enjoyed the uh, public engagement. A couple of things, uh, and I think he's going to address that. So if you can define your role as the facilitator versus the chairperson, mm -hmm. so the times when someone in the commission has a question, either person, uh, possibly the facilitator, can let the uh, chairperson know that there's some commissioners or uh, someone in the community to speak. Mm -hmm. Lastly, uh, visuals, because uh, I'm an old guy and turning my neck is going to hurt my neck eventually. But if we can have more visuals like that screen but larger so that we can uh, see what people are seeing on this screen, that would be very uh, possibly, sorry, to, at both ends possibly. So, yep. and, and maybe a paper copy of the slide so that you have a copy to cheat sheet. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. I like the organization and the way it's set up. I like the facility, um, very accommodating. Uh, I, I did appreciate the comment from the public, comments from the public, uh, and it was nice to hear commissioners speak for a change. We had to hear uh, some feedback from them. Okay, great, thank you. 
Everything was uh, organized properly. Uh, thank you to the IT guys. I know this is not easy to go to a random place and just set up everything from scratch. And they got to do it four more times, so be patient with them. <laughs> uh, everything was good, public comment. And yeah, I think uh, Darlene said over 20 people showed up, which was surprising on a Thursday night. But good, uh, good turnout. Everything went well. Thank you. Um, I appreciated the levity. I'm not a Raider fan, but uh, good timing on that joke. <laughs> Um, the one, uh, I, I do want to echo the comment about the horseshoe because I think it'll get better engagement, better engagement amongst uh, our group of commissioners. And I do think also we need to get some better chairs. <laughs> like in chairman or the seats were? <laughs> yeah. I, I resent that. Hey, <laughs> I, I nominated you. I am a Raider fan, John. Don't hold it again. Don't hold it against me. Um, no, I think it's exciting to see the public get involved. I mean, it's your county. It's been said here many times. So um, I, I, that was a positive. Uh, the staff is positive, And I know they were working through some little things. And like the guys over here, you know, they were probably working with Bon Jovi at one time, you know, at least this guy. <laughs> you know, sound checks. The other guys look a little too young, but, you know. Anyway. Um, no, it's, it's exciting. Um, I like to echo off of uh, Darlene a little bit is, yeah, we, we uh, elected a chair and a vice chair, and I would like to see that the chair uh, run, run the meeting and not so much interaction uh, of him, you know, getting off base a little bit. So. Thank you. And we will be going, we'll be working with the vice chair and chair and just going over those things. Is there anyone, a staff of public that would like to plus Delta, just in case? No? Nope. We're good? Okay, thank you. This makes us better. So it's back to you, Chair. Well, I, I think we're, uh, we're at a conclusion, are we not? You need a motion to adjourn? Um, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Do we have a second? Without objection.